When you retire, you may get a chance to go to football heaven. This is football heaven. George Veras here. Welcome to the mission. Our mission at the Hall of Fame is to honor the heroes of the game, preserve its history, promote its values, and celebrate excellence everywhere. And what better way to celebrate it with the longest running successful primetime sports show in history, Monday Night Football. My pleasure now to be joined by the veteran of the Monday Night Football. We've just been talking to three rookies. Uh, she has had the longest tenure as a sideline reporter entering her ninth year. But also, congratulations to Lisa Salters, who is now one of the coveted 48 selectors for the Pro Football Hall of Fame to choose the next class of 2021. Lisa, welcome to the mission at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Well, if I can, since uh, it, this is a Hall of Fame broadcast, who called you or how did you get the message that you were one of the coveted 48 selectors to join that group that selects the Hall of Famers? It was so out of the blue. It was Mr. Baker himself. <laughs> and uh, I was in the bubble. Uh, it was in, um, in, in July and uh, July or early August. I spent six weeks in the NBA bubble and I got a call on my phone and I looked at it and I thought, Canton, Ohio. I don't know anything about Canton, Ohio, other than the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Who could possibly be calling me from Canton, Ohio? So I answered the phone, and you know, it's Mr. Baker, and he's like, uh, I don't know if you remember me, and I'm <laughs> of course I know who this is. Like, I, of course, Mr. Baker, I, re I know who you are. And um, he asked me, he said, I, you know, I, I, I hope that this would be something exciting for you, that you will say yes. Um, and uh, when he told me, I just was kind of like, if there had been a camera there, like when he knocks on the door for the people <laughs> who are getting into the Hall of Fame, if there had been a camera there, they would have just seen me like, this is amazing. I can't believe this is even happening right now. Um, so it was a total shock. Um, so humbling, such an honor. Um, just, uh, yeah, just amazing to think that they would even think enough of me uh, to ask me to be on that committee. You're really lucky you're in the bubble or else he would have been at your door. Oh, okay. <laughs> and by the way, that was my warning sign to your colleagues, uh, Mr. Riddick, Mr. Greasy, and uh, Mr. Levy, that if they see Dave Bur Baker lurking around a stadium, they should run, because as you probably saw, at halftime of the uh, Browns-Bengals game, we uh, shocked uh, Joe Buck with an announcement that he was the Pete Rozelle Award winner, and he had no idea. Like mm -hmm. no, so that's what we love to do with the Hall of Fame. It's part of our mission: is surprising people beyond honoring the heroes. Um, if we can just stay in the selectors for a moment, you know, you've gone through the first round, the nominations round, but the big one is when you're either going to get in a room together or do virtually or a mixture of two, depending on what's going on, at the Super Bowl in Tampa, to do that final, which is really unique in all of sports. Nobody else does a face-to-face -face meeting on the final vote. They don't do it for the Baseball Hall of Fame. They don't do it for the NBA Hall of Fame. It's one of the reasons why we believe this five-month process is one of the most stringent processes. And that's probably why we only have 346 Hall of Famers out of the 25,488 who have ever played the game. So who have you talked to among your colleagues? What's that like and what's your anticipation for what that will be? Uh, well, I actually just was speaking to Chris Schilling at the hall uh, just this week, trying to kind of get a sense of what, it, how does this work? Uh, I really was unclear on how the whole, uh, how the whole situation worked because like I said, I was in the bubble and then I got out and then it was right into the end of, you know, the season. And so, you know, I called her and, and, and or sent her a an email this week saying, look, I really just would like to get on the phone with you just to, to talk through this. Now I've kind of got my feet on the ground with this season. I, 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 I know what's going on with virtual school for my child. I know what's going on for work. I now feel settled enough that I can really deep dive into what uh, is being asked of me. And so we had a really nice conversation. She was so, so nice and so kind and so patient explaining and laying out every step of the process. Uh, but when she was talking about what happens that one day from 7 a.m. in the morning, uh, until she said we try to get down by two or three, but usually it, it lasts longer. 
just the hours and hours. I said, everyone is in the same room together and they're, you know, how, how does that work? She said, it's, just, it's, it's fascinating to see. Um, I, she said it was intense. So I'm expecting it to be very intense. Um, my guess is it's going to be heated um, because, uh, you know, people are so passionate about uh, who they think is deserving and who they think is not. And uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to be in Tampa or not. They had sent out a, a survey asking if you're going to be in Tampa or are you not. And um, because I don't generally cover the Super Bowl, I usually am doing an NBA that weekend on, on Saturday. But I told her, absolutely. I mean, I didn't know that this happens. And, and this is now my job as a, a being on this committee. I'm absolutely going to be there. I want to be in the room. Uh, and I want to be a part of it. And um, so I, I'm looking forward to it. Whether I'm there for work or not, I will be there as part of uh, my commitment to the hall for this. Just one final note on that, then we'll get to Monday night. Um, you'll find, though, that it's not it's, it's intense, but it's not chaotic. They, it, people think of Hall of Fame votes, unfortunately. We don't. But Dave Baker and Slim Chandra administer the meeting. And they've known uh, uh, many of the ladies and gentlemen and selectors for years. There's a cadence to a rhythm. But just like any rookie, you'll find it incredibly fascinating. You'll be great with it. I mean, it's like being inside the chambers of the Supreme Court. This sure. is a lifetime. And just to point out, when we had our uh, committee selection for the 2020 class, Bill Belichick committed and was at every meeting, even before he knew he was going to be in a playoff or not, knowing, knowing that that final week was actually the first week of NFL playoffs because he was so committed to be an honor, to be able to be a judge. Yeah, and it's a great honor, and, and we're very appreciative of having you there. So looking forward to it. We'll find out if it's virtual or combination as we go along. Right. Looking so, forward to it. Came back to Monday night. Who called you to give you the assignment on Monday night? Uh, well, that was back in April of 2012. And uh, Vince Doria uh, with, was with ESPN at the time. And uh, he's since retired. Uh, but Vince called me, and um, again, whenever your boss calls you, you're, you're always like, oh, gosh, and like, what, what could I possibly have done? And, you know, I, Vince's name comes up on my phone, and I'm like, okay, I answer. And he says to me, like, we, we want to see if you would be interested <laughs> in, to, in being the sideline reporter for Monday Night Football. And once again, I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Am I interested? Uh, yeah, so I was just kind of over the moon. Um, surprised, again, shocked, honored, humbled uh, to be given that assignment. But my first thought was, well, that's Susie Culver's shop. And Susie Culver is a good friend of mine. So I was like, well, wait a minute. Like, I don't, I don't want to do it if, if it means you're, you know, you're replacing Susie. And he goes, no, 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 no. Susie's, Susie's good. She's moving on to do other things. And uh, I was like, okay. And so my next call was to Susie, and she was like, I'm all on board. I'm so happy for you. Um, and so uh, that was a big surprise. Um, but, uh, you know, for him to ask me if I, if I wanted to do it, <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, what has it meant to your uh, – tell us how the impact and being a Monday night has had on you personally and professionally because – you know, the audience of 16 million plus, the diversity of the audience versus you do hits on Sports Center, you're on the NBA, but never have you been in so many mil in front of millions of people. What's that difference been in your career professionally and personally since being on Monday night? Well, I mean, it's the biggest stage that there is in sports. Um, and so, you know, I don't take that lightly. Um, it is, uh, it, I'm always reminded of it when. You know, someone says to me, my daughter watches you and wants to be like you. Um, or a, a guy says, you know, I, I want to be a sports reporter like you and I want to do what you're doing. Um, so, you know, this is not something that I set out to do. I never set out to be a role model, model or anything like that. I just kind of wanted to be a journalist and to be, you know, do my job and not, not embarrass myself just to do a solid job. Um, so to think that uh, someone thinks that uh, I've been solid enough to be given um, this privilege to be the sideline reporter for Monday Night Football, um, it means a lot to me. And, um, you know, now that I'm kind of in, on the back nine of my career, 
rather than kind of right in the middle at the beginning. Oh, no, come on. No, we're not no, I, mean, not, I mean, I am closer to the end than I am to the beginning, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I've been, you know, in television since I was 29. It's been 32 years now. So uh, I've been doing sports for uh, 20 and even longer than I did news for. So, um, so you know, I get to think about it. And, and the longevity is kind of what, I, what I'm proudest of. Uh, because as you know, people come and go in this industry and they're hot one minute and they're not the next. Um, I've never been a superstar, but I've been around and I'm just kind of staying, staying in the game. And uh, that's, that's important to me. There was a couple of your favorite Monday night sideline moments. And I don't want to color it good or bad, but you know, the, the most engaging and then the one that surprised you the most. Uh, Monday Night Football moments. Um, well, I remember the fail Mary. <laughs> that was uh, that was uh, that was early on in my career. I want to say year two was that twenty twelve or twenty thirteen. It was pretty early on. Um, and uh, me asking Golden Tate, "Did you push off?" I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so uh, I remember that. Um, gosh, there just there've been so many. Uh, every Drew Brees game seems to be uh, magical. I tell, tell Drew all the time, he's like, I wish we could just cover you every week because you just break magic every year. Um, you know, certainly the year that, uh, that, he broke, that he broke the record, the pass to Trayvon Smith, um, you know, that was, that was huge. Um, and then, uh, you know, everything that Drew Brees, every time Drew Brees is on our air, uh, it's just, it's just awesome. I'm trying to think. Uh, uh, Peyton Manning had a huge comeback game in his return with the Broncos. We had them in San Diego, I believe. That, I think that was in 2012. Um, he had a big comeback win. Uh, that was a good one. Um, just a lot of, a lot of great, great memories. Um, a little inside football. Tell the audience, how do you separate out your information to fit with the analysts and the play-by-play? -play? And, and take a little, us through a little bit of that process. I think that'd be very interesting for the audience to understand that. Yeah, I think of my role is a little bit uh, more of a storyteller. I mean, obviously Steve Levy, he's, you know, he's weaving stories in and out of the broadcast, uh, but for me, um, I think that I, what I try to do is kind of get backstories on, on these players who are out there on the field, who are under these helmets. And I try to, if there's a really interesting, and so many of them have interesting stories, but if there's a way to kind of weave in, say week two, Darren Waller, uh, just how he's overcome drug addiction. If I can get in 25 seconds to just say three years ago, this guy you know, was kind of at rock bottom. He was on the Ravens practice squad. He, they'd kind of given up, lost trust in him. He knew that they'd lost trust in him because he didn't have a handle on his addiction. And here he is three years later, uh, and he's like a star uh, with the Raiders. Uh, people see that, and then they, that there's a reason to root for that guy. Alden Smith, who's playing this year, again, for the Cowboys, hasn't played in five years and um, to hear the Cowboys talk about just the impact that he's had on the younger players, just the personal struggles that he's overcome. Uh, you want to be able to kind of humanize these players and to give people back at home watching. You want to give them a sense of who these guys are with the helmet off. And so um, that's what I try to do. At the same time, I'm also, I'm the eyes and ears on the field. So I'm trying to see, you know, is, is such and such as, upset with his offensive line right now um is uh is this running back getting chewed out for not taking care of the football for fumbling uh is this person being picked up being being the kicker uh, Guskowski? oh my gosh uh that came against the titans when he missed all those you know i just kind of made a beeline over to the titan sideline and just to watch him just to see kind of what was going on with him he was all by himself um, just in his own, you could just see how frustrated and upset he was with himself. So I tried to be the eyes and ears on the field for the, for the guys. Um, I'd like to say I, I serve at the pleasure of the booth and uh, whatever they need, however, I can make things easier for them, what I can see for them, what I can hear for them uh, and relay up to them. I don't have to get the credit for it. If I can relay information up 
to them that they can use in the game. That's what I'm going to do. How did you come to the uh, love of the game? And before that, we have to note that uh, over your right shoulder there, uh, we see some pictures of uh, Tony Dorsett. So I'm assuming that was an influence. Why don't you tell us where you are right now and the family history and how you came to love football? Uh, I am at the home of my Hall of Fame cousin, Tony Dorsett. Um, and um, yeah, I uh, saw this game on the schedule. Dallas, like, oh, I got to go see family. Um, so they can cook for me and I can hang out. Um, so football for me, though, it wasn't really because of Tony. It was because because um, Tony's on my mom's, mom's side. Uh, it's my dad. My dad uh, just has a love of sports and um, just taught me everything I know about sports, baseball, basketball, football. You know, he taught me how to throw a football. He taught me how to sh shoot a basketball. He had me playing on a team. He was a teacher and he was also a coach. Um, at his uh, at his high school, and so he had me on like the the team. <laughs> if, if he didn't have enough players on the team, he would have me go ahead and play, uh, you know, with other kids. Not in high school, but uh, like in middle school, I would go out there and run around and, and play. So um, sports has always just been a part of who I am, uh, and I owe all of that to my dad. Have you had a chance to come to the hall or come to enshrinement? I have been to, uh, I've been to that weekend. I have not been inside the hall, though. I have not. But I definitely am going to make a point, a point of it now. Well, consider this your open invitation, uh, okay. A for the hall and B for next year's enshrinement, which I extended to the rest of your team. Twice the fun and, wait, what, what is the? Twice the fun and 21. Twice the, twice the fun and 21. And we had the Thursday night Cowboys Steeler game, Friday night <laughs> the Gold Jacket show, that's uh, August 6th. Saturday is the class of 2020 enshrinement, the Centennial class, which is 12 mm -hmm. members, eight deceased members. Mm -hmm. 2021 class will now move to Sunday where you'll be in the room and you'll tell us if it is Peyton Manning automatically. It's probably the second shortest yay vote with Brett. Yeah. Yeah, and Charles Woodson and and uh, Calvin Johnson and uh, and others, and then on Monday we have this great music show concert for legends that we've had for six years, and we've had Maroon Five, Imagine Dragons, Kid Rock, Tim McGraw, Aerosmith, and we're looking to put together like a trio on the stage this year. And you're going to find that week. And what's the date? What's the what's the weekend? It's it's August fifth through August eighth. So I'll Monday. be there. But you're allowed to come earlier. Steve Levy's Twin sons are eight years old. They're bugging him to come. Okay. And, uh, you know, you mentioned you have a, a child or whatever family. Uh -huh. members, you know, we would love to host you at the hall and take you to the archives because people think we're just about the Hall of Famers, but we're not. As you probably know, we're the guardians of the game. We have the name of every single member of the yeah. NFL, their archive records, great broadcasters. You know, this taping, which we were appreciate uh, Derek arranging and hanging with us. We are keepers of the flame. What you're doing now is historical. What you're doing now will be played back at the hall. We won't let this die. You'll be inspiring a lot of other people besides your Monday night, but for the next 20, 30, 40 years. You know, we have a repository of 700 hours of videos. Uh, and we just, with Canton now unleashed, and I don't know if you saw the video, the Centennial Plaza which is a football field shaped plaza downtown in Canton in honoring the NFL's 100th anniversary. And there on 11 player pylon, pylons are inscribed the names of that 25,488 names who ever played the game. No other sports organization has done this. No other city has, done, has embraced the sport like Canton. If you think from the birth of the game in 1920, to enshrinement in 1963 and now Centennial Plaza. Um, so we welcome you to come and we hope you have a chance to come and visit us. I certainly will, thank you, I will. Um, so with that, anything else I've missed or anything else you, you would like to touch on the audience to know about Monday night? Or let's talk a little about the upcoming schedule. What kind of games for Monday night are you looking forward to? I know you have a great schedule this year, kicked off great, obviously, of course, uh, with Lamar Jackson. Mm -hmm. uh, facing the Chiefs, um, Patrick Mahomes. What are you looking forward to? Well, I, I, you know what? The, all of the games to me, I, I, I feel like a cliche player or coach. The next one, <laughs> you know, so this one, the Cardinals and the Cowboys, and, and then next week it's the Rams and 
the, the, the bears. Um, you know, I, I don't have a favorite. So yeah, we do have a great schedule and, uh, and then it ends, it ends with the, uh, the Patriots and, uh, it's another good one that it ends on, and I, I, I can't remember. Hey, did you want to see my Hall of Fame cousin? He's kind of lurking outside. Uh, he knows me. Bring him over. He knows me. All right, I'm going to come on. <laughs> um, Cameo appearance here on the mission. This is, yes, this is just wrapping up, and so come on in, cousin. George says that you know him very well. Do you know Tony, this young man? Tony, my man. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, How brother, you been? Bend huh? down a little bit so we can see your face. Yeah, How that. you doing, man? Hey, good to see you. Doing you doing all right? Yeah, you know. Good, good, to, be, good to be seen. Yeah, yeah. And you, you might remember, Lisa, we did a hometown Hall of Famer program with Tony at the University of Pittsburgh. Two yes, sir. Years, two years ago, and it was that unfortunate uh -huh. week where they had the shooting at the Trees of Life Synagogue, and we raised about $10,000 uh -huh. thanks to Tony's efforts at that great event. And Tony has yeah. always been, uh, Tony and I worked together at the, uh, at the uh, Goodyear Cotton Bowl on appearances, and it's just yeah. a great pleasure, Tony, to have the chance to get to know your cousin, Lisa. Hey, well, well, it's too bad that he went to that other university. <laughs> I, don't, I don't hold it against him. I, I know, it. the Nittany Line, the rivalry, Penn State. Yeah, let me, let me tell you, but hey, Joe, Joe tried, though. Joe Paterno tried to get me. He what? tried hard. That, no, hey, he tried hard. Really? And he tried to get Jim Kelly, too. Remember that? Yeah. Jim, yeah. Kelly, Jim Kelly went to Miami. Yeah. Oh, Joe Pa, well, listen, we're going to let you get back so Lisa can get back and eat some of that. Food. All right. Good Look talking to you, man. Good, good to see you. Be good. Look great. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for bringing right. over your cameo appearance. We appreciate you taking All right. time. We look forward to hosting you at the most inspiring place on earth. And uh, we're there for anything you need, even resource wise for history. We work with all the networks. If they're looking for background information, we supply photos and videos. So Derek has my number and email. We'd love to help you on anything you're doing on background of the game. Thank you, George. I appreciate it.